the government of India at a very early stage realized that the programming of apprenticeship as a very critical milestone for connection between the industry and basically the skill set programs. Uh, unfortunately, we brought in, a, I mean, we brought in an act in 1960 and uh, much has not happened after 1960 because the industry has, uh, you know, taken, the, I would say, different turns and different, uh, there were a lot of events which were governing those, uh, uh, those turns. I mean, one was we nationalized, uh, I think, in our late 80s, or sorry, early 80s and late 70s, we had nationalized our banks, we had gone in nationalizing, we had gone in from a, a free market access into more of a controlled market access. So this was all the uh, program was not taken up at a very high level. But having, I would say this, uh, I would say to look at the post-reforms and pre-reforms. Uh, in the pre-reforms area, we were all governed by the industries, we were governed by a set of rules. We all know that there was a license raj that was ever, you know, during those days. And uh, even if you had to take employees in, you had to take the permission of the local labor officers. I mean, those were the days. Uh, subsequently, in the pre-reforms area, we've seen the market accesses opening up, the job development, the employment area opening up, uh, and uh, skill sets that are, you know, basically what we've realized is that I think in this uh, 2010 or 2012, when the SNAPS was formed, uh, it, was, it came out with a very clear-cut program. I mean, I think if I'm not wrong, I mean, India being in the post-reforms is one of the fastest-growing economies, and the growth was primarily driven by services sectors. And uh, if you realize in our pre-reforms, I'm talking about, sorry, post-reforms, uh, Mr. Manmohan Singh era, economic reforms, the, uh, the mid-90s to about 2010-15, we were a heavily uh, service-driven economy. And you see the apprenticeship was mostly, if you, whether you see our software technology services or it was all homegrown technologies, it was more at uh, home-taught area. It was not something like, you know, it was self-taught area. But now we're getting into the next era of development, what we're talking about, the industry you now 4.0. And this envisages that we skill up, we train up our, our uh, workers to be world-class workforce. And how do we do this? And one, how, one of the critical areas that we've seen is that most of our skill development centers, whether it be the ITIs, be it the polytechnics, be it the various other private sectors that have initiated different uh, methodologies, yet we've been seeing that there's a huge gap in between the supply and demand. And uh, this happens purely because of the fact that, you know, a proper mapping was not done in the sense that the, what the local industry's requirements are, what are the skill sets available, and what was the real uh, aspirations of these employees, I mean, the workforce that is looking forward. So a lot of the times we've been getting out these programs, we've been bringing out the skill set development programs, but we're not truly hitting the target of what we, we, we set out to achieve. I mean, on this, I would just like to add a few points. Uh, if you really see the economies of whether it's a Germany or whether it's a Japanese or whether it's a Singapore or whether for that matter any of the many European countries, they have a very strong industry skill development program connect. And this is how we think the government of Andhra Pradesh and also with the government of India aligning towards the same thought process, we would like to see that this apprenticeship program taking up in a big way. And uh, if you really see that the apprenticeship program of 2013, a target was created for about, by 2020, we should be you know, creating a 20 million fully, work, uh, fully world class workforce. The various initiatives have been taken up and uh, since the uh, act has also been, see the new act has also come in, there's been various relaxation that has taken place. And I seriously have one uh, piece of advice to the delegates sitting on the board, especially from the National Skill Development Council, uh, if you really see, we have actually uh, expanded our training facilities. Previously, it was done by the employability, and you know, it was you know before the skill set, skill development uh, department was made. We had an employment department. So what used to happen is that today, in the initiatives that we are having today, we see basically any company that is training today. Uh, there is a reimbursement of uh, cost being uh, reimbursed back to the company. It is anything from, you know, 1,500 to 25% of the prescribed uh, uh, stipend to the employees. And we've also gone up now to about 7,500 rupees per training schedule. That is either 500 hours or for the three months, whichever is a greater of those two. 
But what we see is that we've really not taken this advantage and we need to have a convergence taking place here. And I think one of the suggestions that I would like to put across to the people in the city in the diocese, we should get most of this third parties training uh, private initiatives, you know, registered onto our platform. If we can have most of these people registered onto a platform, then we can have a convergence of thought process, we can have standard operating procedures, then we can also see integration of, see we are creating today, the state of Andhra Pradesh is creating a digital employment exchange. We would like to be aligned it to the national digital exchange of employment. Now again, these are the some parts that we see that, you know, when there's a small work, you know, it's just a integration that takes place, but there's a lot more value addition coming downstream side. And also, we are proposing, and I would also like to suggest to our Secretary uh, for Skill Development, that going forward, if we can bring out a sort of a geo, uh, government order, where we make the district as a nodal office, along with the ease of doing business, what we have in the industries department, we also have an apprenticeship program, which is connected to this ease of doing business. So, we see there's an alignment of thought process taking place between the actual industry's requirement and to the actual skill sets that we are going to be imparting. And before I conclude, I would just like to say a few points about what our Honorable Chief Minister's vision of this employment, you know, he wants to create a world-class workforce. The state of Andhra Pradesh very soon is going to be bringing out a program of creating a world-class, purely skill set development university. Along with that, there will be a probably I mean, 25 skill colleges being set up in the next two to three years. And we have basically identified that one of the biggest advantages that the government of, or, or the state of Andhra Pradesh has that is that our students and our workforce aspirations are very high. And to match these aspirations, I find it that, you know, we find it that we need to create the right set of skilled man, skilled man force. The workforce that we're going to be creating also should be having its accessibilities to the latest technologies, to the latest techniques, to the latest, uh, I would say, on-field site management of real-time problem-solving area. So this is one of the things that we would also be participating in this. And as we see today, there is a huge potenti potentiality in the hospitality and tourism sector, in the retail banking, in the finance, construction, and logistics. And also let me put it out to you, the workforce of today's Andhra Pradesh that we are going to be creating should at stand shoulder to shoulder at to any workforce that we think in the world. So we are trying to benchmark that you're not going to be second to anybody, but you're going to be the best of the best in the coming days. And with that, I would like to conclude the speech. And thank you for your giving a lend for, you know, a year to the speech. And thank you very much. Jai Hind.